I mean, it's been a long time, hasn't it, since the Conservatives have been in power? It's been a long time. I mean, Labor have been uh, ruthlessly efficient in terms of the way that they've run political campaigns. Uh, they've been masters of the, the media cycle, but every now and then you get a very significant shift in public opinion, and uh, I believe that's happening. How much of it, though, is down to uh, the Conservatives' fault that they also haven't wrested power from Labor? There's no doubt that the uh, merger between the Liberal parties and the National Party uh, has been a, a major catalyst for dealing with the problems of optional preferential voting in Queensland, uh, reducing the number of Conservative candidates in seats. Uh, we, we saw that at, at the last election with you know, a, a modest improvement in the vote. But the, the big problem for the Conservatives for most of the last uh, 20 years in Queensland has been uh, the city of Brisbane and the outskirts of Brisbane and that's where Labor's stronghold has been and the battle for Brisbane will be incredibly important in this election. Is that why the seemingly audacious move of having a person not even in Parliament chosen to lead a party into an election, that's why it's been done? because Campbell Newman as the Lord Mayor or the then Lord Mayor was very popular and he is a man that perhaps uh, has a community in Brisbane that he can use to, to help the LNP win in the state sphere. I believe he has a, a natural constituency and I mean we seem to, it's pretty easy to forget but it, it's not so long ago whilst the rest of Australia was voting Labor Campbell Newman was the only elected Liberal leader anywhere in the country. Now that was a, a significant achievement at that time. Uh, he managed to consolidate his position as Lord Mayor and uh, I believe that he has very strong support and the support for him could well be uh, quite pivotal in this election result. I mean, if you think about it in another sense, basically since 1989 and all but your two years, two and a half as Premier, Labor's controlled Queensland. It's quite extraordinary, isn't it? Oh, it's been... Uh, absolutely. I mean, it's been incredibly hard going for the, the Conservatives. Uh, you know, we, we should have done better in, in, in a couple of elections, but we managed to uh, do some silly things that caused problems, and then, of course, no-one will vote for a House divided, and then that played into the hands of the Labor Party. So, so Labor's had a bit of luck... Uh, the Liberal and National parties have done a few things wrong over the years, but there's no doubt that the Labor Party machine uh, in Queensland has been very efficient and very ruthless. Do you agree with polls showing that this is the LNP's election to lose? Yeah, look, I, I think that on any reasonable analysis of this election, uh, the government is as good as dead. Uh, it's looking at the cemetery gates. Now, unless Labor can somehow uh, turn around the situation by way of uh, the most brilliant election campaign in Australian history, or the LNP not only do something stupid, but the LNP uh, come out with a, a raft of very major mistakes, then uh, Labor really has to be doomed. Why is it so personal between Anna Bly and Campbell Newman? I don't know. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, the Labor Party has made a decision that they have to bring down Campbell Newman to salvage any chance of retaining the Treasury benches, and they'll do whatever it takes to discredit uh, the person that they see as uh, uh, the person responsible for making continuing to govern in Queensland incredibly difficult. Now, obviously, uh, when you get into that area, it's dangerous, it can work but more often than not, it backfires. Your own government was greatly influenced by the rise of One Nation. Could Catter's Australian Party similarly affect the LNP? My view is that the, the Catter Party and the, uh, the independents, uh, in, in this sort of climate, where, where I believe most people made up their minds some time ago that time was up, they wanted to change the government. And, and really, there hasn't been too much of a shift in the polling. Now, the, the floods gave the Premier a, a much-needed circuit breaker, uh, but as the, the floods receded, uh, the old issues came back, and uh, that's been an ongoing problem uh, for the Labor Party. Where, where you have a, a significant shift in public opinion, then I, I think the political fringe dwellers will be sidelined. 
it's where the result is line ball, where you have yin and yang, uh, where you know the result is you know 48, 52, uh, that uh, you could have a situation where they're important. I don't think this is one of those elections. I mean, what do you see are the key issues for this election campaign? The key issues, as always, will be basic service delivery. I mean, Queensland Health is an ongoing nightmare. Uh, and, uh, you know, let's not forget that former Premier Peter Beattie once called a state election to fix Queensland Health. And the situation got worse uh, rather than better. I mean, basic service delivery, the fact that Queensland managed to lose its AAA credit rating in the middle of a resources boom, uh, the fact that, that government by and large is dysfunctional across the public sector. Uh, you know, people, after a while, uh, really get fed up with this sort of thing. And it, it's, it's also a time factor. I mean, even if a government is seen to have done a good job, after a while, people become a bit tired of them and start thinking of a change. Now, the perception out there, I think rightly, is that this government has been far from good. And, I mean, Queensland has a history, doesn't it, of it doesn't change governments all that often. And if it does, usually it's for quite a long time. Yeah, that's right. And that's why I think that if there's a shift on, and I believe there is, it, uh, it will be substantial and uh, it will be ongoing. Now, let's also not forget, though, that uh, in 1998, uh, the Liberal National Coalition, as it then was, uh, received uh, in excess of 54% of the two-party preferred vote and lost the election by one seat. So we also should remember uh, that Anna Bly is a proven and very effective election campaigner. So there's still things that can go wrong for the LNP. There's still things that can go right for Labor. But, you know, you'd have to say at this stage that they're really up against it.